When transforming data in the cloud and at scale, you're very often going to run into situations where your data sources change shape, change size, names change, data types change. It's a very common occurrence. And so within Data Factory, we've built a data transformation, code-free, visually oriented tool for you in data flows that have built-in capabilities and features to be able to handle flexible schemas. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate for you how you can build a data transformation routine with data flows that is essentially based upon a canonical model. And that canonical model is, is defined by you, it is logical, and it is independent of the data source. So when working with Data Factory, you generally build your schemas and your projections within data sets. And within data flow, we refer to that as early binding. But in this case, to protect against changing data, you will want to incorporate schema drift capabilities within your data flow. And so we call that late binding. So let me walk you through with the data flow I have on my screen. I think it'll become a little bit clearer for you as we walk through it. So in this case, I'm working again with my movies data, and this is going to be a very simple analytics pipeline data flow. And I'll show you what the logic is doing. The logic is starting right about here in my derived column. I'm creating a new column called primary genre. So I'm taking a what is a um, pipe delimited multi-value string field, and I am creating an array out of that. And I want to get the primary genre or the first occurrence the first index of that. Then I'm going to filter and only bring back the movies that are of a certain genre and a certain year. And those are gonna be based upon parameters that I will send into my data flow from my pipeline so that every time I run this, I can look for the values for different movies meeting those criteria. And the values I'm going to create through an aggregation, I'm gonna group the aggregation by those filters, by the year released and by the primary genre and then it will aggregate the average movie rating and round that to a position of two. And that's it. And then at the end of this, I'm just gonna sync this back to a file. So the source in this case is going to be a CSV file, which is my movie's uh, text limited file. However, that can be any data source because this is working from a canonical model that I've built here. I've logically built a model using a derived column and I called my derived column as build model. And here are the fields that I am interested in. Movie ID, movie title, movie release, movie rating, and movie genres. Now if you remember in this derived column right after, I'm also creating another column called as movie primary genre. So I click on inspect within my data flow, I will see those six columns. Those are six hardened columns that are projected throughout my data flow that I can use. But the projection starts here. This is late binding. So the way that you do this is you then use an expression in the expression language of data flows called by name. And I am saying, I'm telling Data Factory to look for a column that is called movie within my source. So my source could be CSV, Parquet, uh, Database, uh, Cosmos DB, any of those things. As long as there is a column with movie in it, labeled as this, I will map that to my movie ID field. So I map this, I map each one of these based on these names. Now, because I have schema drift enabled within data flow, if other columns come in or columns don't match that, it's fine, it'll continue to work. But what'll happen is I can now use those hardened projected names throughout my data flow. So if you go back to, let's say, for example, in the aggregate, I'm actually referencing movie rating. I'm referencing movie year released and movie primary genre, even though those are not defined early in my data set. So now let's go to the source. On the source within my data set, my data says movies D2. Notice I have schema drift turned on. So I'm saying go ahead and pass through everything. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data. So under data preview, what you're going to see is you're going to see all of the columns. So data factory will go and discover all of the columns. And it's going to give an indication to me that these columns are drifted. In other words, they're not in my projection. The projection over here is completely empty. This is bringing back the schema from the data set. So I have late binding turned on. I am using schema drift. I have no projection. See that it has returned all of the data and found each of these columns 
And there is an indicator next to each saying that these were drifted. In other words, these were not defined early. This is late binding. This is schema drift. So what I do then is I say, all right, any field that has the name title in it, map that to movie title. Uh, down here for this one, for movie genres, I'm saying any field that has genre is going to be that pipe delimited list. So I'm going to create an array out of that by splitting. You could also use other facilities within data factories, data flows, like by position. You could say given within column two, let's say in this list for title, map that to movie title. Okay, so the bottom line is from the left-hand side of this build model, any source can come in here. I then build a logical model here, and then I build transformations from that. So when we look at the data preview, let's go over to the aggregation here now. What's going to happen is you're going to see the average rating only for the year and the genre that is the uh, parameters default. So my parameters are here on my data flow of year filter and genre filter, and I've defaulted those to 1989 and to comedy. No special reason for that. In fact, I have no idea why I picked those values, but those happen to be the default values. So they're gonna be filtered out here. The filter transformation within data flows is essentially like a where clause of a select statement. So now when I aggregate, I see every comedy from 1989 had the average for that entire set of 5.94 was the average. So what happens now is when I go to a pipeline to run this, so here's my pipeline. Now remember when I'm back here in data flows and I'm looking at the data in data preview, this is only a snapshot of what is in memory in that Spark cluster at that time in the background running this, um, executing this logic. If I actually want to land the data into my sync, which is just going to a folder, I need to run it from a pipeline. So what I'm doing is I'm going to this pipeline and I have a, a mapping data flow activity on here. And I've chosen my canonical model data flow. And then under parameters, this is where I can change things. So I can say, give me the year 2000. And this time, instead of comedy, let's look for the drama. Now, when you execute this from here, from a debug execution within the pipeline, that's going to actually run this and sync the data into the data store. Now the data store that I'm using in my data flow is going to a folder. Notice on the sync for this um, data flow. Remember this data flow is a logical model built here in build model. The right hand side of this is referencing those hardened projected columns. The left hand side is essentially any source with or without a defined schema. It's important on the sync that you set allow schema drift. And that is because I am I am working with drifted columns and creating a logical model. But what that means when you turn on schema drift is that data flow will pass through all of these discovered, newly discovered columns and try to land those in your sync. To control that, what I've done is in mapping, I have used a rule. I use rule-based mapping and I'm saying, only land the columns that have capital M movies. So these are the columns I main the model. So if you don't do this, if you just say auto map, all of the columns that you create plus the drifted columns will get landed. That may not be what you want. So I'm using a rule, which is just capital M movie, and only these columns now are getting mapped. And that's exactly what I want. Now the, the real flexibility in this comes from also saying that any other type of file that comes in that um, has columns with those names in it that I'm looking for that I'm pulling out as well as other columns will work just fine. In fact, we can prove that. So this data set, this Movies D2, actually does have a schema defined in it. Now it's a CSV, so everything is a string. But what I, what I can do is back in the canonical model, I can say, uh, go to my projection, and I can import that schema by saying reset schema. And so there is everything from the uh, data set. And that's just fine because all I'm doing at this point is I'm redefining my logical model by saying by name and I'm actually casting them here as well. So the fact that those are string and that those were named. So this just demonstrates some of the flexibility of being able to handle different types of schema within data factories data flow.